This morning, uh, I'd like to thank Pastor Brody for this opportunity to stand before us behind the pulpit. Pastor Griffin, Executive Pastor uh, uh, Curtis McLaughlin, that's my guy. He, he, he preaches somewhere else, so he's on an assignment. To this awesome praise team, Usher. To all of you, my friends, family, my lovely wife. You know, I used to be in the sound booth. I'm just I want to play. I just play. I just play. I wanted to do that for quite some time. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before your presence again. I have studied God. I need your, I need your power. Stand up with me, oh Father. Hide me behind your cross. Speak through me so you can be edified, healed, and delivered. We do this only because we want to give you the glory, honor, and the praise. We ask you, Father, to forgive us of our sins, thoughts, and our actions. All these things we ask you. Amen. This morning we'll be coming from Luke 8, 43 through 48. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. It reads like this. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from the flow of blood for 12 years. And though she had spent all she had on the physician, no one could cure her. She came up behind him and touched the fridge of his cloth. And immediately his flow of blood, uh, her flow of blood stopped. Then Jesus asked, who touched me? When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds are hemming, it, hemming you in and pressing against you. But Jesus said, someone touched me. For I noticed that power had gone, up, gone out from me. When the woman realized that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling. And she fell down before him. She declared in the presence of all the people, while she touched him, and she had been immediately healed. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Grass withers, the flower fades, the word of our God should last forever. This morning, this morning for a simple topic, I can't take credit for it because my wife gave it. My wife gave me this topic. Yeah, yeah. And it simply is this. It is time to get unstuck. It is time to get unstuck. Like many of y'all may be wondering, where, where am I going? Just hold tight and bear with me for one moment. Have, have you ever suffered a setback that just had you stuck? If we could take a moment just to be honest, we all have had a setback at one point in our lives. Yeah, yeah. They often arise when we least expect it. Many setbacks will leave you reeling and wondering how and when you will recover. Yes, yes, we all have had some situations in our lives that just had us stuck. If, if, if we could take a moment and just look at what the pandemic has done to the world. We can get a glance of, of what being stuck really means. In January 2020, the World Health Organization issued a public health emergency. By March 2020, the whole world was shut down due to COVID-19, the pandemic. We, 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 we lost loved ones. Companies had to close their doors. And to top it off, we couldn't come outside. Some, some, some went into depression. Others lost their jobs. Some even lost motivation to go to the gym. 
motivation to go to the gym. No, no, but I'm just talking about me. That's I'm just talking about me right now. I'm just talking about me right now. You, 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 you may be stuck right now, but beloved, I just stopped by to tell you this morning that it's time to get unstuck. I don't know, I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, my brothers and my sisters, but you are an overcomer. I know that things may seem like they are just fundamentally unfair, but you can do anything with the help of the Lord. I wish I had a witness this morning that know we can serve a God that wills come see about us. Uh, I wish I had a witness. I wish I had a witness. He knows. Is there anybody here that knows that God will come see about you? This morning, this morning, our text comes from the beloved physician Luke, who, like Matthew and Mark, gave us the story of the twofold work of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, if you go up a little bit further up, you'll see Jesus that healed the dynamic man with many demons. The people, the people were scared and asked Jesus to leave. Jesus, Jesus left, left where he was and went back across the river to a welcoming crowd that was waiting on him to come by. While Jesus was being met by the crowd, we see that a, syn- a leader of the synagogue, Jairus, had come and fell at his feet. Jairus, Jairus had found himself in a stuck situation. The Bible says that his daughter, who is 12, is dying. Mark's gospel says it like this. The little girl is at the point of death. Jesus, Jairus, Jairus begged Jesus to come to his house. Jairus begged Jesus to come to his house. Can, can I teach this text for a moment? Can I teach this text for a moment? Just one moment. Just bear with me. Because what I see here, I see some conflict. I see some issue. Jairus, Jairus, who was the leader of the synagogue, that means he had some power. He decided who would lead in prayer, read the scriptures, and teach. He had reached the highest point that life could give him. It's amazing. It's amazing that even he, he even came to Jesus. Because, because the religious leaders were not quick to go to Jesus. As a matter of fact, they accused Jesus. In Mark 6 and 3, it states that they were offended of Jesus. But, 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 but Jesus, but Jairus, forgot all about that. He was in a stuck situation. And if I can use my spiritual imagination for just one moment, I believe Jairus had a need. I believe Jairus had a Jesus right now moment. I believe Jairus had a Jesus right now moment. Can I, can, 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 I, can I paint the picture for you? Jairus came pushing through the crowd to get to Jesus. Can you see him? Yeah, yeah, Jairus had a I need Jesus right now moment. And maybe there's five or ten of us in here Right now, yeah, yeah. they can say, I have, I have a Jesus right now moment. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But I need Jesus in the morning. I don't know about you. I need Jesus in the daytime. I don't know about you, but I need Jesus in the nighttime. Do I have a witness to have a, I need Jesus right now moment. I don't know about you, but if you just look back over your life and see where God has brought you from. Jesus, Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house. And a woman with an issue of blood, she was suffering for 12 years. 12 years. She had spent all she had on the doctors. But, but, but they couldn't cure. And, 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 and this will take me to my first point. You must be determined to get out of your situation. You must be determined 
to get out your situation. Here, here we have a woman that had been suffering for 12 years with the issue of blood. And according to the Masonic law, she was unclean. If, if, if she had been married, her husband probably, probably would have left her. Probably would have divorced her because she would have been unable to take the care for her children or for others without making them unclean. Her unclean status would have meant that she probably was unable to attend the temple or any other worship service. She probably was lonely and outcast to everyone. But the Bible says she spent all she had she spent all she had. So in layman terms, she was broke. She was broke. She was broke. But she was broke financially, but she wasn't broke spiritually. She was broke financially, but she wasn't broke spiritually. She determined to get out of her situation. Can, can I help someone? You may be here this morning, broken. You may be frustrated, even sad or angry. It may seem that you don't have a way out of your situation. You even, you even may be saying, where is God? I just stopped by this morning to tell you, God is with us. We serve a God who cares about us. His word says that he would never leave us nor forsake us. I wish I had a Bible reader this morning. The Bible says to cast all your cares onto the Lord. God will sustain you. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. He will sustain you. Is there anybody here that has some situations in their life that they couldn't do nothing but call on the God who came and see about you? He pulled you out of your situation. Before I get too happy, y'all know I get happy. Y'all know I get happy in a minute. Let me let me throw this into your pot. Let me throw this into your pot. Stir it up like gumbo. Our second thing I want us to see that we have to be intentional to get out of our situation. We have to be intentional to get out of our situation. The woman with the issue of blood. She was intentional with her plan. She pushed through the cryo so that she could eat, so she could just touch the fringe of Jesus' clothes. She was determined and she was in intentional. She did not let the crowd stop her from getting the help that she needs. And that's has to be, that has to be our mindset. When our trials and our tribulations come our way, we have to go ahead and be intentional to get out of our situation. We have to be intentional to get out of our stuckness. We have to keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing no matter what. Uh, lastly, lastly, before, I, before we get out of here, it's just simply as this. We have to stay focused. I don't have nothing else. I don't have anything. That's all I have. Determined, intentional, and faithful. Determined, intentional, and faithful. Determined, intentional, and faithful. The woman with the issue of blood had enough faith in Jesus that she knew if she could get Close to, close enough to him, she, and, and just touch his garment, she would be healed. She was determined. She was intentional. She's faithful. Can I throw this at you for a moment? Jesus, Jesus, was getting pressed by the crowds, and he knew the difference between the crowds touching him and the women and the woman touching him. Jesus said, who touched me? Because he felt the power come up out of him. Now, now I had to wrestle for this for a moment. I had to, I had to go back and dig and dive for a moment. 
because Jesus, Jesus, how can he not know who touched him? How can he not know? He's man and he's divine. How can he not know who touched him? As I wrestled, as I wrestled with the text for him last night, all through the week, I found that Jesus was demanding a personal confrontation with the woman. Stay with me. Jesus was trying to get her to come forward, not to call her out or shame her or even embarrass her. But he was recognizing her faith to offer her his blessing. His blessing. Stay with me. Stay with me. Jesus, call her daughter. Call her daughter. We don't even know her name. Could have been Mary, Lisa, Lucy. And we don't know her name, but Jesus called her daughter. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all, 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 y'all missed it. Jesus welcomed her into her, his community. Maybe, 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 maybe. Let me help you with this one. Let me help you with this. I was thinking deep in sin. I was sinking deep in sin. Jesus, Mary's baby, he came. Pull me, Ray, come here. Is that anybody's testimony? Is that anybody's testimony? You were sinking deep in sin, and God came and see about you. God reached down and grabbed you and pulled you out of your mess. Jesus called her daughter. She confessed what her issues was. And Jesus said, she was made whole. She was made whole. She was made whole. Just Jesus wasn't concerned that she was unclean. Remember I told you she couldn't go around anybody. But our Savior, he doesn't care what, what your situation is. He'll come. He'll come and see about you. They may have made, they may have called you a drunk, but you a usher. They may have called you a crook, but you a deacon. They may have called you an addict, but they call you pastor. Before I go to my seat, before I go to my sleep, I want to drop this on you. I want us to see that both accounts demonstrate the power of Christ. The passage of scripture shows us the power that Jesus has over sickness and death. Goodbye, comedy hill. My time is up. It's time to get unstuck. When the pressures of life start to weigh you down, don't give up. Give it to God. Don't give up. Now it's to him who's able to do a sin in the abundance. All that we ask or think. Don't give up. Don't give up. When you, whatever you're going through right now, call on God. Don't give up. He'll come see about you. Uh, he'll come see about you. He'll turn your sorrows into joy. He'll fight your battles. He'll make a way out of no way. I know it for myself. If I have a witness here, say yeah. God will come see about you. Don't give up. But joy comes in the morning. When you're waiting, you're looking at the worst circumstances possible in your life, just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hang on in there. The struggle don't last forever. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody here that has a thank you on their mouth? I thank you in their heart. I thank you in your praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My brothers and my sisters. In this life, we will have issues. In this life, we will have pain. But we serve a God that's able. We serve a God that will 
We serve a God that wants a relationship with us. I don't know about you, but I'm glad he came and got me. I'm glad he came and got me. A low-down sinner. A good for nothing. And he came and got me. I was in that woman unclean. Do I have a witness here? Is there anybody here that can say I was? I was. But Jesus came. Mary's baby came and see about us. 